Hey, it's Soul giving you guys the World of Warcraft, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to talk about inscription and what I do to make, well, a lot of a lot of gold. If you guys have seen enough of my videos, you'll know that I'm decently well off with the kind of income that I make inside the World of Warcraft thanks to just selling glyphs and stuff. I did a basic tutorial on how to set up Trade Skill Master to kind of maximize profits and to make sure that you're always selling out of profits, but I wanted to go, you know, a little bit more in depth as to what I do in order to make all the money that I make. Now keep in mind that while I'm going to talk kind of like it's a guide, this is not necessarily a how-to, uh, you know, make millions of gold in the world of Warcraft. This is just what I happen to do. What I do is based on the kind of lifestyle that I have, the bandwidth that I have available for me, and so of course for you guys, your mileage is going to vary. Maybe you have the time to make a whole lot more money, or really, you know, focus on, on gold generation, and maybe not. But I'm going to share my best practices, so pick and choose whatever you like. Some of the methods might be total blasphemy, like you're like, oh my god, what the hell is Soul doing? This guy's an idiot. But hey, this is what I do because it's, it's what I do. It's kind of why I called it the casual millionaire, because in the end, once you have everything set up, you're not doing a whole lot of maintenance, and you're not trying so hard to just be on top of the market. The whole idea is for me to have an income that makes me just not worry about gold ever again. But it suits my lifestyle. I know that if I were to like hook up with a super tough mythic guild and sell, you know, sell mythic carries all the time, I'd rake in the dough. But to be honest, I don't have the skill or the gear for it. And while it is a lot of money, it's just a lot of money that I, that I don't need. I don't need this kind of money now. I just do it because it's relatively stress-free. So let's get right to it. I chose Inscription way back in Cataclysm days because it just seemed easy at the time. There wasn't a whole lot, there wasn't a huge barrier of entry to get in there. And once I was in, you're always in because, you know, well, aside from expansion changes and things like that, glyphs don't exactly expire or go bad. Even during the time when glyphs were permanent, people were still buying a whole lot of them. The realm that I happen to be on, which is Bleeding Hollow, is a mid to high-ish population realm. So there's a constant churn of people making new tunes or rolling alts or switching to alts and things like that. In the current expansion, glyphs are once again a temporary thing. It's just a temporary enchantment that you put onto a spell or an ability. If for whatever reason you wanted to change your demon hunter's wings to fell wings and then you wanted to change it to tattered wings, well, if you want to change it back to fell wings again you have to go buy a new glyph thanks so as a humble vendor of glyphs i have a kind of golden rule and this applies to i guess everything that has to do with gold generation or heck life and that's to always buy and sell out of profit making glyphs and tomes is a very resource intensive endeavor you're easily going to go through like thousands upon thousands of herbs just so you can craft everything that you need so you're going to have to measure for yourself you know what's worth your time should you go out and farm dreamleaf over uh in front of uh those dungeons and the raids i forgot the names of them dreamleaf is definitely the most uh, valuable herb to farm for because not only because when you mill it you get this thing called a nightmare pod and inside the nightmare pod might be more uh, inscription mats. Fell warts is also worth milling because that's where you primarily get your sallow pigments. As for what I do, I mostly do my farming from the auction house. Usually I just try to snipe a really low price whenever I can and on a semi-regular basis my guild will send me herbs to mill. And by the way pal, if you want me to keep doing these gold giveaways, I'm gonna need a lot more herbs that I'm getting right now. Now of course herbs are important for our guild flasks and all that stuff, so I try to limit what I pull for from them. What when it comes to the fell wart, oh that's all mine. If I have Lettuce Argaris, then I'll just turn all that stuff, turn it into dream leaf, send it over to my scribe person, and hey there we go. So I did mention earlier that I would try to buy low whenever I can from the auction house, uh, but of course I want to sell at a profit too. So it's super super important that I keep track of just how much these prices are. TSM or Trade Skill Masters does a pretty good job of telling me what the relative price of certain goods are. But but maybe out of paranoia, or I guess I want to be a little bit more hands-on, I'll just take a glance at the auction house and uh, take a look at how much Sal is going for, how much Rosé is going for, and things like that. And once I have these prices, I plug it into a spreadsheet that my wife and I made, and it's like, it's a super, super powerful tool. And it's a pretty simple one, I just have the price of Rosé and Sallow that are set up, and once I plug those prices in, it's going to show me both the crafting cost uh, for each of the kind of Legion glyphs uh, that I create, and the minimum auction house price that I should set it to in order to break even. And I set up a spreadsheet like this because unlike all the previous glyphs, Legion glyphs have a varying cost where maybe it's only one cell pigment but 60 roseate pigments or the other way around. It kind of balances itself out. So this made things easier when I needed to readjust the price every other day or so in order to keep myself afloat. When it comes to the older glyphs, that's a much easier system to understand. When it comes to the cost of those glyphs, it's also different from Legion glyphs. I just kind of give myself an arbitrary number of 15 gold 
as the absolute highest cost that I'm going to pay for a glyph. Which translates into three rosate pigments, because if you look at the ink trader in Dalaran, you can trade one rosate pigment for one of, well, any of the inks aside from the special uncommon inks, which don't matter a whole lot for you anyway. The price of a rosate pigment, at least as of this recording, is around 30-ish gold or so. So trading rosate pigment is absolutely not an option at this point. You don't want to trade 90 gold worth of pigment just so you can make a rinky-dink little glyph. Even though some of them do sell out of profit at a couple hundred gold, you're kind of better off going to the auction house and just snipe whatever old herbs that you can get. And by the way, I'm not even really doing that because earlier, before this expansion dropped, I just went ahead and bought, I think, 20,000 of every ink in the game. Now, obviously, that was a really time-consuming thing to do, but 5 gold per ink is much better than possibly 30, in case I were to buy out every other herb and I still needed more stuff. When it comes to what I craft and what I stock, I just kind of craft almost everything. The reason why I do that is because you never know. There might be some enterprising player that will buy out like an entire set of glyphs that normally don't sell for very high, you know, in an effort to reset them and try to get a much higher price. So if I happen to have a lot of glyphs on hand, I might as well, you know, be able to jump in on that as quickly as I could. At the same time, if it turns out that they sell very poorly or they don't sell at all, at least my maximum loss is just making those things. It's not like they're going to go bad. When it comes to stocking, I only keep about five of, of each of the Legion glyphs, and I keep up to 40 of the previous ones. I'm still at a point where I'm not entirely comfortable with having 10 or 20 of every glyph, including, including the Legion glyphs. The price of materials has started to flatten out, but not so much yet that I want to start you know, mass stocking stuff yet. For the non-Legion glyphs, I already have the ink, so I might as well just keep as heavy of a stock as possible. I do 40 of those because those are the ones that go faster because, well, they're cheaper. I only craft like once or twice a week because otherwise it'd be a bit too time consuming. And at least for my situation and in my realm, that seems to be a pretty comfortable pace for me. And from there I just post. That's... That's really, that's really it. The only item that I try to time and be careful of are the Toma Tranquil Mines. Tranquil Mines sells for like gangbusters, which is usually whenever your guys raid nights are. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays before I raid, I'll put up like 50 or 100 of them going for, I don't know, like seven, 800 each just to see if they go. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And well, that's, that's really nothing for me to stress about. Anyway, that pretty much sums up what I do uh, for my money. I don't know if this information was actually useful for you or if this is just like me bragging or something, but I want to use this, uh, I want to use this video to just be able to answer questions if you guys have any about selling stuff or TSM or inscription related stuff. Uh, just let me know in a comment below. Thanks for making it to the end. Thanks for your support as always. And I'm Sol. Stay breezy, guys. Mm -hmm.